from that. So I had to do a daddy duty. Um, and so tonight I'm, I'm, I'm free. And, and so um, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? And so um, this is where we, we normally go through our uh, reset. Since we, 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 we did, we finished um, the curriculum for the, I mean, we, we went through John, we went through uh, Colossians. Um, and so uh, Colossians, we went through Ephesians. Yeah. Now, this is mainly what we try to go through the new year because I consider it the new year for us. It begins in September. Okay? So just so that you. I want to talk about discipline. Okay, I want I want to talk about talk about us um, disciplining our lives. All right, um, and how we can. I don't know about you. If anyone has a lot of unfinished things, if there are little things on your docket that is incomplete, if the Lord was to look at you and you would say. Anybody? Yeah. That there's a couple incomplete things yeah. that's on. And, and so what I'm trying to do, what I want to do, and especially the Lord is dealing with me, yeah. is not so much try to be work out of being productive. That the goal is to work out of my purpose. And working out of your purpose requires discipline. Anybody with me? Amen. And so, let, let me just, if you can't open your Bibles, and we're going to talk a little bit more than, we're not going to do a deep Bible study as we always have it. That will be definitely next week. Um, if you open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 9, and go to verse 24 to the end. First Corinthians nine. First Corinthians nine, and I'm going to read from twenty four to twenty seven. That's what I'm reading. Twenty four to twenty seven. First Corinthians nine, twenty four to twenty seven. So I'm going to spend some time. This is where I, I was motivated. Actually, this this come, comes from our uh, uh, Bible study we do in Ephesians. Yeah. Okay, First Corinthians, found it. Say Amen. First yeah. Corinthians nine, uh, verse twenty-four to twenty-seven. So I'm reading from the. Let's see what version. This is the English Standard. All right. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain. Every athlete exercise, your Bible probably says discipline in all things. In all things. They do it to receive a perishable uh, uh, wreath. But we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. 
I do not box as one beating in the ear, but I discipline my body, keep it under control, check this, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. to that, I don't want it to be one where after I preach, You will disqualify yourself. You want to be effective. And so the point is, um, when I'm talking about discipline, the first thing that's required is a plan. In everything that we do, in your Christian life, in your friendship life, in marriage, there has to be a goal. Where's the end? Where you want to end up? Right? So let's say, for instance, I know I'm going to go home. I'm going to drive my way home. I know that I have to end up in Long Island tonight. So I, there is a goal in mind. What I want to do. That's the plan. I know the destination. But what's the end goal? What's the end goal? You got to have the end goal in mind. And then you establish the plans in between. And this is human nature. I believe that I have to discipline myself. Because if I, if I don't discipline myself, I'm going to go nowhere. I can get a ticket. You understand what I'm saying? Does this make sense? So, for each Christian, and God teach you this from the beginning. From Genesis, God was trying to teach you this from the beginning. When he created the world, he did not do it overnight. He wouldn't have done create the world, and he disciplined himself. single day and eat up here. You need a plan and discipline yourself to make it there. Okay, I've been doing a lot of talking. I know that's some of you taking notes, but this is what we're going to go on. I'm just trying to lay out the route. What's your program? Discipline yourself, right? Okay, your Christian life. What's your purpose? Okay. Okay, now I'm talking about earth. We need earth. While you're on earth, what's your purpose while you're here? Okay. And then we can go any form that is. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. What's your purpose? Purpose. So the most
person, and who knows? And who knows? Everybody could be sitting here just saying, we hear the gospel. That's your purpose. Glorify God. In all ways, bring glory to God. In all ways, what? Acknowledge him. I want you to remember it. Now, the path, the direction of the path requires discipline. We didn't get there yet. But if your goal is to bring glory to God, you have to set out the map. You understand what I'm saying? You have to set out the map. Every single day you want to bring glory. Our ultimate purpose is to bring glory to God in everything we do. Everything. Every conversation we have, every, every, every interaction we have, everything we do must bring glory to God. There are no wasted movements. That's what we learn in Ephesians. This is where it comes from. He was showing you that you must bring glory to God in your your life, personally, with your uh, neighbor, with your family, and in employment. All the areas of life in Ephesians, what we learned about individually, bring glory to God. With your neighbor, your church brother, bring glory to God. With your kids and your husband, bring glory to God. Or your wife, bring glory to God. And at work, bring glory to God. Everything you do must bring glory to God. That is your purpose. If you didn't know it, that's it. Now, some of us get confused in the office or calling. And we say, I'll call him. No, the calling is the vehicle you drive in getting to your purpose. So maybe you don't know what kind of calling you're driving in, but you know the purpose. Because you don't necessarily have to drive in a call. Of course, all of you are called. Of course, you are called. But that sometimes in your walk, you're still trying to figure out. You may not know immediately if you're going to be a pastor, evangelist, just somebody that volunteers. But you do know once you, when God gave you breath, every single day of your life, bring glory to Him. Amen. Every single day. Calling or no calling. With pastor or no pastor. Title or no title. Every single day, bring glory to God. Now, the discipline is the day-to-day. -day. Because not every single day of our lives, we are disciplined in doing that. Make sense? Yes. That's what I want to work on. Do you have a plan to accomplish your purpose? I, you know that what it is, but do you have a plan? For instance, if I was saying you want to be a nurse, couldn't just wake up and say, I'm going to be a nurse. You had to go to school for it. And the times, the moments when everybody else was running outside, playing around, you disciplined yourself to get your work done. You had to study. So that means you had to give up some things in order to accomplish this goal. That's what I'm talking about. Are we willing to make the sacrifice and set the guidelines for us to accomplish our goal in giving God glory in everything? Unless we'll be beaten at the ear. And we'll be disqualifying ourselves. And that's what I want. And, and so each week, we're going to be talking about discipline, but that's why I, I, I laid it out on Sunday. I want us to be disciplined in our pace, disciplined in our faith, disciplined in our relationships. Discipline in our fellowships. How we fellowship, we need to be more disciplined too. Because we say, I want, I want fellowship, uh, Evangelist Rose. Uh, I want more uh, uh, fellowship. But yet, we don't do the day-to-day -day stuff to make that vision come to pass. We can't just click our fingers and it happens. God is expecting us to put aside something. The spiritual life you want, the spiritual life you want, yes. that, could, that relationship you want with God, the deeper relationship that you want with God, you know what's going to require? Discipline. That deeper prayer life that you want, you know what's going to require? Discipline. 
any person that wants to be extremely successful in ministry or in life has to be disciplined. Discipline is strategy. All right? And so for the next few weeks, I want to go to figuring out your purpose. Plan is the strategy. Discipline is, it looks past feeling. Some of us wake up and we're impulsive. Wherever the wind blows, there we are. I wake up not in the mood, so I'm going to be undisciplined today. Anybody, been on a, anybody been on a diet before? Or try to be on a diet? With me so far? Amen. So, I, I want to, I, I want, that's where I really want to bring this next few weeks of Bible study, um, that there's little scriptures here and there that it may not be, we may not sit in one book or read, you know, every day and go through exegetically line by line as we deal with Ephesians, but I'm, I'm going to create a good syllabus for us in discipline that you can look back at your notes and pass on to somebody else because I want to make this as practical as I mean, I, I know you love the theological. Some of you are very deep. You love the theological. You love the Ephesians going deep. But I, I believe, what's the sense of me being the, theological and preaching and your lifestyle disqualifies everything? That's what the Lord tell me. I can give you so much word in Ephesians and I can preach all day long. But if you, after it's all done and your lifestyle disqualifies or cancels out everything you learn, what's the purpose? This is, these next few weeks is going to be challenging. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you these next few months. I'm going to be challenging. I'm going to challenge every fiber of your purpose. I'm going to make, it's going to require that you be as honest as you can in where you are being incomplete with your walk with God. That it's going to require, this is going to feel like every now and again, a little bit. So don't get mad at me. This is going to be very personal. I think Sunday message was that. Very personal. What's your shepherd? You say the Lord is. Do you live like he's your shepherd? Is he really shepherding you? Seriously. Is he really, is the Lord really your shepherd? We went Psalms 23. Is the Lord really your shepherd? Are you living like he is? Because if he is, then you should be disciplined. With me? Amen. So, what is your what do you see? What you, you want to give God glory to God every single day of life? How are you going to do that? Maybe you don't answer. How are you going to do that? How are you going to how are you going to discipline yourself every day, day to day, to meet that goal in work, in your relationship, at home, um, in church? What plan are you going to put together? And I want to see plans. <clears throat> That's why I'm challenging. I want to see, you say you want to give glory to God. How are you going to do that in church? Tell me what you're going to do differently. Okay. No, don't, 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 tell, don't tell me. You're going to work on it. I want to, I want to, how are you going to change at home? How are you changing at home? What, do you, what is something about, what are the traits that you're going to rearrange in your life so, so you can accomplish this goal? 
Because part of discipline is accountability. I'm going to make you accountable for what you say. Because a lot of us say a lot of things in private and we don't, we don't, we don't see through it. We don't see through to it. And it's not going to happen in your life if you don't, if you're not held accountable to it. Or take responsibility. That's another thing. We cannot, we, we are, we're not as responsible. We say it. But because we can live any way we want in the dark, Our lifestyle don't change. It don't change, Mother James. And that's why there's a lot of things incomplete. Truth. That, that's where I am. The part of our, a lot of our frustrations, a lot of our frustrations and our being tired and us being weak is that we're not living out of purpose. Do you know purpose feeds your life? Do you know some of us are diagnosing our tiredness based on our flesh and it has a lot to do with more our soul? And a lot of your frustrations in life, you blame it on other people, but it's not the other people. It's your soul screaming out saying, you are off time with God. <laughs> And because we can't see our soul, the quickest thing we do, we scapegoat and we put it on other people. But that's your soul speaking to you that you're tired. Oh, we, I'm telling you, we're going we to go. If you don't recognize the tiredness of your soul, you will blame other people for your frustration. Yes. And, make it, and you'll say it's somebody else when it's your soul saying you're dying. It's crying out, but you don't know how to diagnose it. So what you do, since you can't see your soul, you blame it on what you can see. And sometimes we take it out on our family, or our friends, or church people. Or our children. And it could be an unrest here. Unrest is here, but it's the unrest. You ever been tired? Everything makes you mad. Seriously, you ever been tired? Yeah. Hungry. What about hungry? <laughs> annoyed, right? Anybody say something that's just annoyed? Yeah, Angry. Angry. You know what it is? What the Lord said, your soul is hungry. You're not. You're not. You're not eating. In the green pasture that I've given you. You're eating somewhere else. You got filled up with garbage. You're eating somewhere else. And so your soul is not satisfied. And because your soul is not satisfied, you feel it. Because the Lord is not your shepherd. And you need to eat. So if he's not feeding you, what you eating on? If you don't discipline yourself and eat the right food, you're going to eat cake all day long. Yes. And although it may satisfy you in that moment, that nutritional value will kill you. Same for our soul. Same for spirit. Did you know that? There's a spiritual appetite that your, that your soul wants to eat too. That gets neglected. Got to feed it too. But that's where we are. That's, that's, that's really what. I, if, if you have a plan, where do you want, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself in ministry? What do you want to do? Yes, I know you want to bring glory to God, but I want specifics. What do you want to do? You know what I love when you said, uh, um, Mother Denton, you said you want to play the organ. That's now, that's a way where you can facilitate, that's a way that you're saying, okay, I want to bring glory to God in doing this. And then now that you've realized you want to bring glory to God by doing this, now you got to set up how you're going to get to that. That's the practice. 
That's the practice. That's the lessons. That's the sacrificing when you want to knit. Then you have to set that up. You understand? That's what I'm talking about. What you want? What you? Where you see yourself? What's the plan? Okay, uh, Sister Marissa, you say you don't know your calling. Okay, what do you think your calling is? Tell me what you hate. Because a lot of times God will show you what you are about what you don't like. Okay, so take some time to think about it. But up until then, you, you're in a ministry. Right? You're in a ministry. You're in a... a and I, again... It feels like I'm putting you on the spot, so get comfortable with it. Get comfortable. It's not me. It's not, a, not, not me trying to um, make you nervous or anything, but I'm just trying to bring it to you. Okay? You're in a ministry. What are you doing to improve in that? Right? What are you doing to discipline yourself to make that ministry to give glory to God better? What are, what are you doing in your off time that when you, it is time, you've created, you have practiced enough to make that day that you worship better? There's no way I could be a pastor and not study. There's no way that I can't dedicate time and, and study when I want to do other things. Like some, some Saturdays, there's tons of things that goes on that I can't I can't go. And they know already, leave Stephen alone Saturday. Leave me alone Friday and leave me alone Saturday. That's, that's the day. I mean, it starts from Monday's the day off, but after Tuesday, Monday's for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is for church. And, I, and I, if I don't put, I'm personally, if I don't put in the amount of time, I feel I let you down and God down. Amen. That I'm not giving my best. That's how I feel. Because he's been giving me a task and I have to be disciplined enough to make sure I accomplish it. No matter how great you think the word is, I know personally I'm not living to the expectation God has for me. That's what I mean. What are you doing off in off? What are you doing? What are you doing outside of church to improve the titles that you're in? And discipline yourself. Right, that's it's creating the. And here's the thing. Let me tell you already. I don't, I don't look at age. I don't look at young people. Nobody's retired. The only time you retire, you retire. No, you don't hear, even heaven, you don't retire. You're still going to be worshiping. Because you guys are old, young, we all are effective. We have something we do well that nobody else can do us but us. There are, there are parts of my life I can't do as good as elder. Elder has people that specific tied to him that I can never touch. And the elder has to do it to his best of his ability. Again, this is not me coming at anybody. This is me stirring up the gifts. Amen? So, for the remainder of the year, what, that's, that's what I want, I want to talk about this discipline. I really want us to look at the guidelines of our life, see the direction we want to go, see what we're trying to do, and our discipline to put together that plan. Amen? Amen. Any questions, concerns, comments? That this is where we want to go, or, or you know what, no, let's, 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 let's study Romans instead. Anybody have suggestions or, or anything? With, because I know there's some books that you want to study. And that was, I was going to, this is what I wanted to do. But I also, I know that there are books, people that, you know, you probably say, oh, Pastor, one day can we do an, an in-depth study on David? You know, can we do an in-depth study on Ruth? I have no problem with that, too. You can put that on the agenda because after, after this, you know, 
Is there anybody you want to learn about? I always want to study the book of Habakkuk. I always want to learn the book, but as show sure right now, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this thing? Wonderful. 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 Wonderful.
There are not, a lot of times my uh, elder, my brain take over in my prior life show. That I rely on this instead of getting on my knees. Anybody, I don't know about anybody else. I'm just exposing myself. I rely on my logic and how my mind can get me out instead of my prayer life. And I know that for me, I have to learn to submit my brain to God completely, all the time. In everything I do, that I, I must learn how to devote that time because it will make me better than I am. There's a lot of bad decisions that stem out of this and I'm just waiting for God. That's me. See, I'm going to be open and transparent for you. Some is the anger. Some is anger. Some of us are impulsive, and I was saying that on Sunday. Some of us are impulsive. We're very impulsive, and that's why we're ready to explode and very emotional. In every moment, any little thing, somebody do this. <sighs> Not good. Right? So, you got that? Patience could be. Patience could be. Patience could be that for someone. Right? Um, so I did, and then you did say where you want to be. So did you write down time? You want to learn how to. Um, do anybody want to share theirs? If it's not, you want to learn how to really uh, divvy up your time, to be a good steward over time. Okay? I need to be consistent. Time? Okay. Time reading the word. Time and reading the word. Consistency. Consistency in, in reading the word, praying. Time again. Time. It seems time is a lot. How many people got time? How many people wrote time? The thing is, I never have time, but you got to miss time. Prayer creates time. Amen. Prayer creates time. God is great at redeeming time. Prayer, and that's what I'm saying. Prayer. Have to and that's the, the idea is if if I get more time to pray, yes. things will be better. Yes. God is saying if you pray more, things will be better. Right. You pray you give me more time and I'll give you more time. Yeah. That's my that's my, my That's what God is that's what it is. Prayer creates time. Time doesn't create prayer. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Time will never create space for you to pray. Because there's always going to be something to do. Prayer creates the time to give you the strength for all that you can do. Amen. We've always looked at reverse. If I only have more time to pray, and then we end up praying on our beds and go to sleep. Yes. But prayer is what gives you the strength to function in time. So I, time, time to pray only comes from with praying. You know, Pastor, for me, and I know sometimes when you say this, people look at you as if they think I'm not trying to condemn anybody. Mm -hmm. And people. People have their own idea, but for me personally, and I always talk about it, and even my grandkids are never let lie. There was a time in my life, all I had was Jesus and my Bible. That's it. And it was just such an awesome, fruitful time. And then I hear you say something once, and it resonated with me that when we have drifted from where we are supposed to be, mm -hmm. we don't realize how much we have lost until mm -hmm. we try to make it back. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I remember the days, and I would often tell people that praying is, is awesome, mm -hmm. but just to be in the presence of the Lord. And there were days when I would just we used to have a time where we just hang together. Mm -hmm. I never went to ask him for anything. Mm -hmm. 
But just like you have your parents, you check your parents, mm -hmm. you check your friend. Mm -hmm. How you doing today, Lord? Yeah. Oh, what's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Nice just to be in your presence. Mm -hmm. We don't, and that is what I miss. Mm -hmm. I thought I could serve God on the run. Mm -hmm. But everybody's life is different. I'm not telling anybody to live their lives. No, that's I'm all not trying to, con to, to, to condemn anybody. Yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that I know mm -hmm. what I have with the Lord. Yeah. And you try it. Now I'm at the place I said, Lord, I can't make it back mm -hmm. unless you bring me back. Mm -hmm. Because you realize how much you thought were you. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it wasn't right. you at all. But that was the place mm -hmm. where the Lord had me. Mm -hmm. And every day I listened to, to and I, I was even this week, I was saying to the Lord, I don't want to die with this thing. Take me back to the place where I first received you. I got to make it back. Mm -hmm. Because it is such a song with the church that we could say the same thing over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And never. But God, you got to bring me back, Lord. Mm -hmm. Where I used to, at a certain time, I used to cobble every Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. I would come and I would lay there. And if God didn't say nothing, I wouldn't say a word. Okay. But just that I know he had an appointment. Yeah. I had a spot in my home where I prayed. When I came home in the evening, and at the end of the day, like 9.30, 10 o'clock, I would just, when I'm done talking to everybody, I say, okay, Lord, let's just hear me. If I wake up 10 times in the night, I will fall to my knees 10 times. I'm not saying I would be here for 10, 20, but it was just the way it was. Right. Right. You know? Yes. And there's a love song that says, make it like it was. Yes. The way it used to be. Yeah, I know that song. You, you know the song I'm yeah. saying? Yes, I do. So we have relationship with people. Yes. But there's something right. Right. that once you taste it, right. you live with that. And you cannot be satisfied. Right. You'll never get it back. Right. right. Once you tasted it, once you tasted it, you know how you know how other things taste. Like if once you taste steak. You know steak is completely different than bully beef. Yes. yes. You know that. You yes. know steak yes. and you know bully beef. Yes. And there's no way you can, you, no one no one can give you bully beef and said that's steak. Yes. No way. Once you spin in the presence of God, yes. you know when you are with it. Yes. No, you know. You know and you know you're when you're you're substituting. Yes. Or you're not giving him what he's what's he doing. Do. There's a hurry. There is. There's a rush. It's in not on. that bad now. Yes. But are you, and I, I spoke to Serena about it. I said, yeah. Rina, it's kind of weird. Yes. But in my heart, I want to hang with the Lord. Yeah. But I literally feel this this hurry in yeah. my spirit. So you, 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 you're preaching my, my So when you know, yeah. no, no, you don't know what, you don't know what. I, and now, I mean, I was just so overwhelmed. Yeah. When you when you spoke about time. Yeah. That's the Lord. And, 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 I, and I'm saying, Lord, who could really can meet our needs yes. like God. No, no so if God is saying to me, Rosemary, you need to be disciplined, oh, I'll put myself under that yo. That's the Lord this speaking is what to me. I need. See, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one. That's yes. the Lord speaking to me too, that I'm in a rush. You feel right. it in here. I do, it. my spirit. I, and you want to stay. But I'm, I'm not doing enough to time. It. And I so the word was seen to slow down. Because you're missing, here's what he's saying, you're missing yourself too. I'm not only missing God, I'm missing out on who I can be. When you, prayer slows you down, not only to get to know God, but get to know yourself. There are a lot of things about me that I don't know because I'm moving too fast to recognize it. And so prayer slows you down. That meditation. So what you speak about too is not only prayer, but it's med meditation. Exactly. There's a level that, there's a, there has to be, and you know what that is? Discipline. Yes. That meditates. Day and night. It doesn't necessarily have to be with words. No. It can be your mind, your mind. and your heart your saying whatever you say to me. Yes. Yes. I'm open for you. Mm -hmm. There's a silence that happens that God will speak if you allow him. There's a lot. You're shaking your head like, you know, there's a meditation that God wants to create, and that's what we don't do. Our meditations. Our meditation is on church. 
Oh, you know where we meditate? When well, we have a lunch supper and I said, okay, we have that right before lunch supper. You know that quiet time before we eat the bread, before we eat it? We say, okay, let this moment be one of introspection. And we, we wave it over the bread. And then I sat you out of it. But there has to be moments of meditation throughout our day. It doesn't have to be words. Yes. Even when you, you know, sometimes you're just, yes. when you think about the goodness of the day, yes. you just lie down here yes. and you, you just meditate. Yes. And you just tears coming yes. down mm -hmm. because you know where yes. God bring you from. Mm -hmm. And you just meditate upon You know what's a good, what push you? Okay. Read this passage of scripture yes. and just sit there. And mm -hmm. just sit there. And it's so good. And it's so good. Don't, don't, don't rush it. Mm -hmm. Read that the Lord is my shepherd. Sure. Yes. I yes. shall not want. Hallelujah. Just sit there. And watch. Watch how you talk. You know, when it was Sunday when he went to the party, he said, He makes he you lay down. lie down. That's right. That's what he does. Just yeah. lie down. You know, and I was thinking, and he said, My God. It's a, he fights you. Mm -hmm. yes. Sometimes we have such a rush. We don't take time to sit down and digest, you know, that sweet yep. fellowship with God. Yeah. And sometimes he might have to slow us down. Sometimes he slows down in a sickness. Yes. And all those I didn't, I, he does. I didn't want to mention it. He does. But he does. He does. That is something I asked him. Okay. That is yes. something I asked him. He humbles you. Yes. Yes. Do problems. Yes. yes. And he just slows oh you down. God. And, and slows down. Where you're going and you have to stop. Mm -hmm. And really have nothing. Yes, this is the best thing. Yes. 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 You know, it's Slowing awesome. down makes you recognize how much he's done. How much yes. he's done for you. Yes. How much he's done yes. for you. For you. Yes. And how yes. actually green your grass, grass is. Yes. And the green grass is yes. here when Russian, you Russian sometimes because we are so in a rush to get where we're going because we think that spot is mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And not realizing that it's green here. Yes. And God forces us through sickness. Anxiety breakdowns, yes. 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 unemployment, yes. layoffs yes. to get us to just yes. stop. Stop. I just have a moment with you. Give me a moment. Give me a just have a any relationship and you don't give that partner time. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. You don't give that partner that you say you love the time that they deserve. Trouble. But they love you. Sometimes you feel like you're not, you're not in it, like you're not, like God not reaching you. But then again, that's why I go back to when we diagnose, yes. again, our sweet born by the Sunday, when we diagnose our tiredness, yes. sometimes we keep it just on the flesh level yes. and not recognize our soul, our soul is tired. tired. Hungry. Hungry for the word. Oh, tired. God. God and that's why we go to sleep and we're still tired. We yes. wake up tired. And nothing you do can slow your mind down. Because your body, your soul is off time. Yes. And he wants time. He's saying, I need to be fed. I need, I need some, some I need some tender loving care. Yes. I, I need to be caressed too. I saw your soul. Mm -hmm. I, I need you to kiss me. Mm -hmm. Yes. I need <laughs> I mean I'm trying to put it in ways that you understand. I need a hug. I need it. Yes. And because out, out of sight, out of mind. Mm. That's how we treat the soul. I can't see it. So therefore, I can move on and I'll feed everything else. Yes. And the soul is like, you don't realize how much energy I give you. Yes. That's what the soul is saying. You don't realize, you think about an eternity. Yes. You don't know how much strength I'm giving you today. Yes. Sometimes when you are oh there, right? You sit down and oh, yeah. you start to look over your life or look over things. Some of those sicknesses you that you have, some it ain't flesh. flesh. Yes, I look at things come by them. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Mm. And then you just feel that Jesus. feeling. So you just feel it. I'm telling you. Jesus. Some of the sicknesses that we have ain't flesh. God is good. We misdiagnose and we go to the doctor and the doctor says, ain't nothing wrong with you. Because he must not. Ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> That's the soul. That's the soul saying, I'm tired. I'm tired. And, and you have not. I, I did preach about it one time that there is a doctor that's when he x-rays, 
when God x-rays, you know, that's what the x-ray is, showing you stuff, the ligament, because you look fine, but you know something is off. God is x-raying your soul. That's what the word does too. It's an x-ray of your soul. Yes. Because that's what's giving you the energy. Yeah. Giving your mind the energy. And if you don't stop and pause, meditate, and pray to give the time it needs, it affects every area of your life. You don't feed the soul, it will destroy your natural relationships. Yes. Amen. And then Pastor, what I understand as well, when you meditate and you recuperate. Yes. So, and it reboots you. Yep. Oh, I, we can't, I can't wait to Sunday. Let me get to the rest where he restores my soul. Yes. We need a reboot. Oh, yes. And we can go on vacation. And some people, uh, 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 minister, uh, uh, pastor, uh, 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 let you go on vacation. You're like, I'm tired. Yes. The soul wants, the soul wants a rest and vacation. Where it has time to shut down and you take care of me. Yes. Yes. And what I'm saying is that when it doesn't, the same way when you're tired, it your when your spirit is tired, it will destroy natural relationships. Yes. When your spirit, when the supernatural is tired, that, that spirit of yourself is tired, you will destroy natural relationships. Yeah. That's a guarantee. When your spirit is unrest, you will see things that's not there. You remember in some time past we used to have a place where where I think I don't know if Pastor then used to go there somewhere in the country way down state, down south where you would go for your three, four days and mm -hmm. people just lie mm -hmm. down there mm -hmm. and just just yeah, we yeah, have to bring back the treats. Just treats. Just threaten these, you know, these have cats to. and all those things. Amen. You know? We have to implement retreats. Mm -hmm. You know? Bring them back retreats, spiritual retreats. Yes. Where we are forcing ourselves. Yes. Where it's, I mean, we, we do have vacations and whatnot, but I'm talking about implementing spiritual retreats. Yes. Where we are forcing ourselves to go away. Yes. And all we're doing it's is fellowship, fellowship and <laughs> pause and meditate. The problem is the reason why meditation is difficult. The reason why meditation is difficult. See how comfortable that is? I only do that for a second. Your your ears want to hear something. You don't know what to do. see. That, see that pause? That was purposeful. Yeah. You're waiting for what's next. Yeah. Oh yeah. But if I stop and pause and just put it, you're like, okay. <laughs> Hello. Time is going. You can't do it. Discipline. Yeah, because I love the part we said earlier where it, not, it doesn't always require words. It doesn't. Um, my mind races and it goes all, it takes me all the way back to college. So my sophomore year in college, I was what they call a resident assistant. Mm -hmm. They brought in an outside, um, like an outside psychologist to speak to us one night because like once a month we're supposed to have these get togethers. Mm -hmm. And as you said it, my mind went back to that setting. We were in a similar setting. Mm -hmm. And this, the, 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 the proctor was, he, he led us in a meditation exercise. And ironically enough, and, it, and when you were speaking, it took me right back there. We had to listen to ourselves breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had to close our eyes, mm -hmm. be still, mm -hmm. and listen to yeah. ourselves breathe. Mm -hmm. And as you inhale and exhale, you had to get it to the point where you could get the the, the pace or the rhythm yes. of your breathing. Mm -hmm. And you had to match that. And what, what was really cool about it was. Everybody, the biggest, the brightest, the boldest, the toughest. Mm -hmm. When he when he when he took us on on pause and said okay, and we had like the debrief. I never forget this one guy, huge guy, football player. It was like wow, that was powerful. I've never felt anything like oh that. Oh my god! Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the irony of it is, in my mind, I'm sitting here going back to it does require discipline mm -hmm. and to some degree humility because you have to get to that place where you're willing to let go. Oh, yes. 
Yes. Because it because yes. it was so much easier to do it when he let it and like and, I, and even though I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm I'm asking myself I wonder if mm -hmm. because you know sometimes by default the human mind wants to have like this proctor to say okay and do it this way and close mm -hmm. your eyes and take a deep breath in breathe in breathe mm -hmm. out but part of that discipline especially like for those like people that are kind of like yoga, like yoga fanatics and things like that is getting to that place where you sit still mm -hmm. you just Get, you kind of come to the center mm -hmm. of listening to your own breath. Yep. It, it, it's, it's no wonder that God implemented it. He implemented a Sabbath breath. You can't tell me that God wasn't the greatest psychologist ever. He implemented that. If God rested, wait, let's pause for a second and think about that. God lets you know that after all that work, me, God, had to take a day off. Okay, you probably not getting it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If God, you know, because I have to make this thing. If God, after His work, said, "I am telling you that I need it. I need a moment to pause, debrief, detox." Yeah. What say you? Was it Exodus twenty? I like right. Exodus twenty. Like I ate something where he says, Don't lack a fire, don't cook nothing, just stop. Sabbath breath, church. Mm -hmm. Personally, coming to church for me is not rest. No, right, it's not rest. You know, I read something about that. No, I don't feel rest, right? <laughs> yeah, when I come to church, uh, yeah, I come uh, to worship, yeah, I come to work. yeah. Rest for me is a time when I, I do nothing, yeah. Just with him. Yeah. Just with him. Um, church, they, I read something recently uh, about how church be, has become such work. Church has become work and it's more of an obligation. Mm -hmm. And that's because we fill it with things that we're not used to silence either. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have music because if we go to a day and we're just silent in church, we're like, what kind of church down here? Yeah. Yeah. You know, let me tell you, in my head sometimes I see it like one day I'm gonna come up. <laughs> you can do it too for the And I thought I'd get away with it. Yes. But then they were like, what did you do today? Yeah. That's what I, sure God told you don't say anything. Is we have worship and for that, but it's it's hard because visitors and whatnot, for that first twenty minutes, nothing. Sitting out, sitting out seats and fifteen minutes, ten minutes of meditation. Sit here, and nothing is said, and just listen to your, listen to your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Some of you, if you stop and listen to your thoughts, you realize how crazy you are. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that true? Yes. And we start to think about some of the thoughts that we have run through our head so that we can catch them before we say them. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of taking thought, every every thought captive that lifts itself higher than another God. If we pause and thought about what we're about to say, then we can let the word catch it before we say it. Let the word arrest it. That's what the word wants to do. It wants you to pause. So that it can, when your synapses and your brain is saying, say something foolish, the word want to say, let me get that. Give me the opportunity to arrest that. Because this, that's going to cover a lot of pain if you say it. Yeah. Yeah. But you, that can only happen if you allow the spirit to slow down. You know what I mean? You, you got to give your spirit enough time to catch it. Because the word... Think about that word we're saying. He said, take thought so that you take thought, take captive every thought that lifts us up higher than the knowledge. So it wants the word, the word is there to arrest it. The thought. I can catch it if you let me do it. If you slow down. If you let God do his work. And the only way you let God do work is you have to get out the way. He would do it. It takes discipline, though. You don't have to be as angry as you are. 
telling you. And your life, your life would be better. That's probably, that's my signal. Okay. That's my signal coming. So that's what we're going to do for the next, okay, for the next few weeks. That's, that's what we're going to be. We're going to be in discipline. Creating the plan, the day-to-day, to shape our lives in what we want to live out our purpose. Prayer is a discipline. Meditation is a discipline. That's a discipline you have to implement. It's not something that's every, every, you know, I just do it here. No, that's a discipline that's required. Okay? So we'll work on that. What were you saying about um, why meditation is difficult? We're not used to, we're not used to silence. We feel, we, are, we are a culture filled with noise. No noise makes us uncom- uncomfortable. Actually, that was what we preached about actually in a little bit Friday night. Um, so in Second Samuel, I not find it. That quickly. Let me just check. Second Kings. Yes, Kings. I'm sorry. It's when the first Kings. Let me get it out. Um, yes. I got it out for you. Let me get the scripture for you so you know. Um, close. First King 6, verse 7. First King 6, verse 7. If you, if you look at it, um, for, just for a second, that's where this theme started, actually. Um, it actually started before that, but the motivation, First Kings, let me show you a little bit why it's uncomfortable. Six, verse seven. All right, God is building the temple. All right, see that? First King, first King, six, seven. In building the temple, only blocks dressed as a quill were used. No more trees were born. Of the iron tool was heard at the temple side while it was being built. So the temple was built in silence. When Solomon uh, put, put together and instructed them to build all the rocks the shaken in the were off site. So on the site of the church, they, they carried the stock, the stone, shaped it in the cave, carried it, and fitted no, no hammers, no iron work. They just built it in silence. So there was a build, he built a temple in silence. One, it was signifying reverence. That was the most. Silence is signifying reverence. Meditation is a matter of reverence to God. I'm taking this opportunity to not say a word because this is showing you reverence. So there was work being done, but nobody knew. We're a culture, if I don't see it, it ain't happening. If I don't hear it, it ain't happening. If I don't see it going on, it ain't happening. So we can pretend and we can make our own noise. That's why sometimes church is sometimes I don't like it either, because sometimes we can pretend noise to make it seem like God is building. And we can bring our own hammers, and it's not God's. And we can bang, 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 but it ain't God. And we got to stop confusing noise with power. You know, that just because it's noisy don't mean it's powerful. God can do a lot of things in silence if you let him. In fact, he would move, he, he, he don't mind moving through history. He, he was born in obscurity. Look at my birth. I was born, nobody knew me. But don't tell me I wasn't powerful. Can you do that? Are you comfortable with that? That's why we're not used to, that's why we're not used to silence. We love spotlight. We love noise. We love praise. We love that. We love rush because it's productivity. And God says, if I'm going to use you, I can use you purposeful in your silence. Quiet. Meditation. 
but that's part of discipline. We kind of have to rewire ourselves. It's going to take a rewiring. It is. To implement, I know for me, implementing more plans is going to take, me for, it's going to take a rewiring where I don't have to run to every alarm. Now, of course, you got to use wisdom. But go through your schedule and see where there's free time. I bet you have a lot. That's, again, we're going to require going through your schedules, too. Can you go through your schedule and carve out, I bet you can go through your schedule and carve out 35 minutes for the Lord. Can you? Can you? Can you go through your schedule and carve out 35 minutes for the Lord? Can you? When you're creating your schedule, do you say, this time belongs to the Lord? Yes, I do. But just, but to be honest, and there are times when I used to keep it. Right. Yes. But then I find myself not being right. really, I'm so I'm talking about me too. Yes. And when I'm saying be with the Lord, I'm not talking about just studying for the Word. Yeah. No. Because studying for the Word is not necessarily being for the Lord. Exactly. Don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, don't, because some people think that, oh, because you're studying, you didn't know that. But my job to do for the Sunday, the God requires outside of me studying, to study just to be quiet. Yes. Yeah, that's not the same. It's not the same. And any pastor that says, oh yeah, my time, I'm using to study for, no, 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 have to. Studying with the word is not me giving God time. And then I can be with my Bible and still not give God time. Yes, exactly. So don't think when you take taking out your scripture and you read that one scripture per day, that's become part of your schedule. That's not giving God time. I don't want to don't mess with anybody out here, anybody watching me online, because a lot of times people just read that one little Bible scripture. Let me read Psalms today. That's not giving God's time. That's you put it in your, in your schedule, and it's become more of your obligation. I'm talking about giving God time, giving God time, and you shut in giving time. Meditate on it. Think about it. Pastor. Now, not trying to get smarter. Because we can read the world trying to get smarter and get deeper. You know, we can study, st we can study the words. I just want to get deeper. I want to try to get deeper. Yeah. That's different. I was, I'm not cutting you. The other day, no, I was. Are you trying to cut me? I don't feel it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Energy. Yes. I be coming like Mr. 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 What up there? Mm -hmm. How oh, it just feel so you know you mm -hmm. you know how you feel. Yes, so absolutely. You know. Yes. And I go to God and I talk to Him and I ask Him mm -hmm. and I find myself not sleeping either. And I say, what is this? But I always put my TV and the Word. Mm -hmm. So that if me wake up in the night, me listening, I know that the word going on. But we still now get no grip. Mm -hmm. And the other day I said to him, I said to him, I said, God, I have to come back to where I used to be. Yes. I used to be so that's you know, I want if I talk to somebody, because that's what I need, what I said I would like to be. If I if I love to go out and pray for people, mm -hmm. like if this one's sick, I want to come and I want, you know, I want to pray for people. I want, you mm -hmm. know, just get it. And last night, last night I tell myself, I said, I'm going to sleep tonight, you know, and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, when I sleep, as when I sleep, I start, what I do, I put in songs in my head. Mm -hmm. And as I wake up, like, you know, when you wake up, it's coming, like, I can't get up or work. Mm -hmm. So I start to put these songs in my head, and I say, Lord, help me with deep, me they want the word, whenever I come with some type of the key. Me just want your word. And believe me, Pastor, it's a Sunday when you say, um, lie down in green, Pastor. 
I say I'm going to live in my green pasta and I start up today. I take the word and I just not not tell. I don't want no TV. I don't want no. I just want to talk to it. Mm -hmm. I just want to hold on for it. I just want like it come back home. Mm -hmm. I just want to come back home. Because before my daughter did it come in like me and was friend. Yeah, he's, he's like still your friend. He's still your friend. Yeah, 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 he's still your friend. And this problem has come to decide that. I'd like to see me. I'll take my word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'm not to carry you, but yeah, I'd look at the time too. Um, but yeah, I think that's what I'm hoping that um, we can slow down. Yes. I'm telling you, it's going to make everything better. Yes. Not only your life, but your, your family life. Yes. Seriously. I think it was your husband that came up that first week at, when you acknowledging your anniversary. And then that was, when you slow down, yes. you get time to get to know each other too. Because we could walk past each other and not say anything. We could be so caught up in our schedule. And yes, we're trying to provide a better life. I'm trying to provide a better life for your children and whatnot. But it, it still requires a slowing down. How, hey, how's your day? Yes. Hey, how's your day going? It's good? How's everything? You all right? It's good. For your church brethren as well. All right? Again, we can sit right next to each other and they're not your neighbor. So sometimes I say touch your neighbor and y'all just touch your neighbor. Y'all don't touch them because they're close. They're not really your neighbor. You know nothing about them. And it takes time for you to slow down. You know what I mean? It that's what I want to build, a, a, a fellowship a discipline of fellowship where I'm not saying we know everything about each other. You don't have to know all my details, but I can feel that I can still connect. Yes. I still feel like I can, when I feel low, I can strap my lines and tie up my lines and draw some energy from you. And I feel like I'm invading in your personal space. That's what we need. Yes. And that's another reason why church sometimes feel like work because it's no rest here. It's a lot of different frictions and whatnot going on. Remember, I did say that. That's why lambs can't lay down. The sh the sh they can't lay down. That the shepherd has to clear the friction. Yes. Then you can lay down. All right. All right. Thank you. I actually didn't expect for it to go all the way. I really thought it was just going to be a, a, a half an hour, but we can see already that this is a lot longer. So I think we're going to stay in discipline. I I, I think. I could see that, that it's pushing me more than I thought. Than, than, you know, you, sometimes you worry that you're preaching something that's only for you. And then, well, because when the Lord was telling me that, I was like, oh, that's for me. And I was like, I just throw that scripture out there. And then, you know, you have word, test, a testimony here and there, pull me over the side. I was like, Pastor, God's been telling me to slow down for a year. He's been sending me to slow down for a year, and I have been disobeying him. And I'm like, really? Like, the Lord has been dealing with me. So, I, I'm so thankful that I'm not the only one. All right? So, next week, I've given you guys a scripture. For next week, that is the first Corinth first Corinthians nine, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Next week we'll go into depth a little bit more and we're gonna start putting together a plan for discipline. I want to give you practical stuff you can implement every day. That would be nice. If I typed up so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. If I get you a... Uh, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. But I'll, I will 
I will do something or, or less. Um, I will make copy. I'll try to get copies. So, okay, as best as I can, so we can go off that. Um, I, I I was so happy when I used to be at Riverway. It was easier. I had the notes. I could just boom boom boom. But I'll, I'll do it definitely. I'm gonna put together step one. We're going to have a plan. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Tisa. I need an assistant. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Step two, and then each week, what we'll do, I'm going to dedicate a uh, a um, a Tuesday night to that. Okay, so I'm going to dedicate next week with your overall plan, like the purpose. I'm going to dedicate a Tuesday to that. Then I'm going to dedicate a Tuesday of implementing that plan. Then I'm dedicate a Tuesday in your calling. I'm going to dedicate a Tuesday into where are you now. I'm going to dedicate a, a, a Tuesday into the discipline, meditation. I'm going to dedicate a Tuesday into prayer. I'm going to dedicate a, uh, into fasting. Because all of these things are trying to break the pattern of, of, of your body, of your spirit. You have spiritual patterns too, spiritual habits that they're not good. You have to break them. Okay? That's what we all need a reboot. Control back in the day was control or delete. You know what reboot is? When the things are no longer, you have to shut it down. Forcefully shut it down. When your phone when your phone frees up a little bit, and then you have to hold on to the power button and turn it off, and you see that little line that's rebooting, that's what your life needs. And use that. Come on. All right, let's pray. Pray. All right.